The Japanese attack on Hawaii on December 7, 1941, sparked the defiant battle cry, Remember Pearl Harbor. And even 75 years later, the dwindling ranks of those who watched the attack happen remember it still. Our cover story is reported by Lee Cowan. Hawaii's Pearl Harbor. It was just a place before it became a memorial. A tropically tranquil place that was Dorinda Nicholson's childhood home. This was my favorite part of the neighborhood. Because... Dorinda was just six years old that Sunday in 1941. Born in Hawaii, her family was civilian and lived near the dock for the famous Pan Am Clippers. The idea of war coming to this remote Pacific outpost seemed to most here about as likely as a white Hawaiian Christmas. But at 7.55 a.m. on December 7th, a storm did indeed come. They were coming right over the house. And when you came outside and you looked up, they were right there. Right overhead. Canopies pushed back, and you could see the pilots' faces. They were that close. What did you think when you saw that? Oh, I just leaned closer to my dad and hugged him a little closer. Six Japanese aircraft carriers had sailed to within 300 miles of the Hawaiian Islands, loaded with more than 350 planes that were on Oahu like a swarm of angry mosquitoes. Dorinda's family fled to the relative safety of the island's sugarcane fields. But Navy seaman Dick Jiraco, now 95, had nowhere to go. Two or 300 yards over there is where I was. He had joined the Navy at age 19, and was part of the crew that manned the PBY Catalina flying boats out of the Naval Air Station at Fort Island. How close were the bombs falling to your hand? Oh, within 100 yards. He hightailed it to a nearby ditch for cover. And when I first went in it, I'm laying on the bottom of it. And another fella come jumping in right on top of me, laid on top of me. And he was saying Hail Mary's as fast as he could say them. And I said, well, that takes care of that part. I don't have to do that. <laughs> but then a Japanese pilot spotted him. This fellow says, well, you might as well turn over and watch this. Dumb me, I turn over. I said, looking up, I'm looking up at a dive bomber coming down. Straight at you? Oh, yeah. Banked out over the airfield and looked right down in the ditch. And I could look him right in the eye. Hangar 79, just one down from where Dick was, still bears the scars. The bullet holes in its bright blue window panes remain, reminders of the serenity shattered on a quiet Sunday morning. Were you mad? Were you angry, confused? I, I don't really recall whether I was angry or not. A lot of people asked me if I was scared, and I'm sure I was. If I wasn't, something wrong with me. Scores of planes were bruised and battered. By At the, the Army Air Corps' bomb. Hickam Airfield nearby, the Japanese assault continued. Parked wingtip to wingtip, nearly every American warbird was incinerated before ever taking flight. But Japan's real target was Battleship Row. The Utah is shown capsized and partially sunk. Within minutes, the California was sinking, and the Oklahoma had also capsized, trapping hundreds in her hull. Well, the whole side of Battleship Row, clear down to the Arizona, is covered with planes, the people in the water, swimming, trying to get out. It was a terrible, terrible scene. 95-year-old Delton Wally Walling was perched high in a patrol tower that day and saw it all unfold. Can you imagine how I'm feeling now when I'm watching my great Navy stuffed down my throat? I'm devastated, mad. And it got worse. Not far away, the Shaw, a destroyer, exploded with such ferocity it sent pieces flying a half mile away, a moment captured in this iconic photograph. That almost knocked us off in the tower. But it was the Arizona that got the worst of it. Hit by armor-piercing bombs, it too exploded, killing 1,177, the single largest loss of life in American naval history. Her hull is still in the mud where she sank. 
the Arizona remains the final resting place for most of her crew, including 23 sets of brothers, family dying shoulder to shoulder in a war that hadn't even been declared. When we talk to people, they will say, oh, my father or my grandfather wouldn't tell us anything until he was 60 or 70 years old. They were told to forget about it, to just get on with their lives and forget it. Craig Nelson spent the last five years compiling one of the most recent accounts of Pearl Harbor, published by Simon & Schuster, a CBS company. December 7, 1941, he says, was arguably just as pivotal to our identity as the 4th of July, 1776. It completely transformed the United States. At that moment, we were 14th military power in the world behind uh, Sweden. So it served really as a rallying cry, in a way. It made us put on our big boy pants and grow up and become a global leader. The U.S. did bounce back in double time. All but three of the ships damaged or sunk on December 7th were raised, repaired, and sailed again. In fact, by the end of the war, the U.S. had chased down and destroyed every Japanese aircraft carrier used to launch the attack. This is the greatest generation in the world, and we're down to the handful left. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wally, like most of the other 40,000 or so enlisted men on Oahu that day, was just a teenager back then. But history's clock is relentless. I see their faces right before me and know they're gone. Pearl Harbor's chief historian, Daniel Martinez, has worked here for 32 years, and with each passing anniversary, he worries the collective memory of December 7th is fading. Uh, most of the young people that come here don't have a clue what happened at this place. They don't even know who won the war. How we will remember World War II after they're gone? This was a huge open part of the harbor. Dorinda Nicholson now lives in Kansas City, Missouri, but has made the nearly 5,000-mile trip here to Pearl Harbor for almost every anniversary to tell her story, sometimes bringing with her the tiny gas mask that she and her brother wore as children in the days after the attack. So why did you keep this all those years? Oh, it's my history. It was history that changed her life and ours. The cry, remember Pearl Harbor, Sounds pretty obvious, but the challenge for the next generation is to really remember, absent those who will no longer be here to remind us face to face. They are my heroes, and I will tell their stories as long as I live.